Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Welcome to worship whenever it is that you might be tuning in. Regardless of what time it is, or what day it is, or regardless of wherever you are, we are worshiping together. You are united with one another in spirit and in heart. The Holy Spirit is the tie that binds us across all time and all space. We praise God that we are never alone because we always have each other and because God is always with us. Amen. Friends, joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us, dear Lord, in your forgiveness, your grace, and your love. Satisfy the thirsty, and give us the life only you can, can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Dear friends at home, remember your baptism. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please pray with me. O God of glory, your Son Jesus Christ suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from Acts, and it's a timely reading. Next week is Pentecost. Today's reading is part of the introduction to that narrative of the outpouring of the Spirit on Pentecost. These verses tell of the risen Lord's conversation with his disciples on the eve of his ascension in which he promises that they will receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts, the first chapter. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When Jesus had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Our psalm today is taken from Psalm 68, verses 1 through 10, 
and then 32 through 35. Let God arise and let God's enemies be scattered. Let those who hate God flee. As smoke is driven away, so you should drive them away. As the wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to God's name, exalt the one who rides the clouds. I am is that name. Rejoice before God. In your holy habitation, O God, you are a father to orphans, defender of widows. You give the solitary a home and bring forth prisoners into freedom. But the rebels shall live in desert places. O God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a bountiful rain, O God. You restored your inheritance when it languished. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. You ride in the heavens, O God, in the ancient heavens. You send forth your voice, your mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose strength is in the skies. How wonderful you are in your holy places, O God of Israel, giving strength and power to your people. Blessed be God. Our second reading comes from 1 Peter, selections from chapter 4 and chapter 5. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that God may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith. For you know that your brothers and sisters and all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Our gospel reading comes from the gospel according to John, the 17th chapter. Here's to set the scene. On the night before his crucifixion, Jesus prays to his heavenly Father, asking that those who continue his work in the world will live in unity. This is the gospel according to John, chapter 17, verses 1 through 11. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you 
the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the word that you gave to me, I have given to them. And they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and all yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. I believe in the Holy Spirit, and I believe that the Holy Spirit was alive and well when these texts were chosen for this particular Sunday, some 60 or 80 odd years ago, when the lectionary schedule was put together. Sometimes coincidences are not coincidences, but are instead God-driven, God-directed, spirit-led happenings. Here we are in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic, where thousands of people around the world are dying each and every day. Between two and 3,000 people in the United States alone each and every day. And yet we have these words from 1 Peter. Cast all your anxiety on God because he cares for you. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. We also have these words. And now I am no longer in the world. These are words from Jesus. But they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. I believe that God can use absolutely anything to speak to us, to make his presence known to us. I believe that God can speak through nature, through sunsets and through birds and through gardens and creation. I believe that God can speak through people that we know. God can speak through strangers. And we all know that God can speak through the words of Scripture. Words that say things like, cast all your anxiety on him because God cares for you. Words that say the prayers of Jesus for his people. Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. I look over and into this empty sanctuary and it still breaks my heart just as it did two months ago, one month ago. But we are still one. We are still the people of God. We are still God's children. We are still followers of Jesus Christ, disciples. We are still brothers and sisters. And we still greet each other with peace, whether that's done in the pews, in the aisles, or at home, or over the phone, 
or over Zoom. We still give hugs to one another. These are emotional hugs. These are spiritual hugs. We are still united as one family. The family of God. The family of St. Mark's. Neighbors here in St. Paul and around the country and around the world. God still binds us together. I need these words of hope. I need these words of comfort and encouragement. I need to be reminded to cast all of my cares on God, to cast all of my anxieties on him because God cares for us. Sometimes in the depth of the dark night of my soul, I need to be reminded that these things that occur to us whether it's the coronavirus pandemic or a, or a car accident or a tornado or what have you, that these terrible things, they don't come from God. These terrible things come from the devil. These terrible things come from sin in the world around us. These terrible things come from chaos that sometimes feels like it just rains, that chaos rains. But it won't always be so, because our God is a God of hope. Our God is a God of peace. Our God is a God of strength. Our God is a God of restoration. God of all grace will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. What is right now will not always be. I pray for a miracle each and every day. I do believe in miracles. I try and pray expectantly. Though sometimes that's easier said than done. But I do pray to a God that I know loves you and a God that I know cares for each and every one of you. A God that cares for this assembly, even though we're not gathered in this sanctuary, even though we're gathered at homes or watching on a tablet or a phone or on, or on a television. I pray to the God that I know holds us all together and will one day see his body, this assembly, resurrected again in this very sanctuary. You are Christ's body. We are Christ's body together. And even though we're not gathered together in this sanctuary, we are deployed, spread out in our community. We are still Christ's body together. And if I doubt that, then I doubt the very power of God to hold us together. The last thing I want to do is doubt the power of God. I believe we are Christ's body in this world. We are Christ's body who just gave a hundred masks to the St. Paul Public School so their teachers and staff and faculty can be protected as they go about their work this week and, and, and next week returning kids' belongings to them. I know that we are the body of Christ together when our council makes phone calls to everybody in the church. I know that we are the body of Christ together when you pick up the phone and call somebody or you pick up the phone and answer a call from somebody. When you send me a text message saying, I probably shouldn't be doing this, but I'm going to the grocery store in Grand Island. Pastor, what do you need? Or when you call somebody else for that. You are the body of Christ alive and working in the world. And we know those things. We can do those things because the Holy Spirit is alive and well inside of each and every one of us. That's a sermon for next Sunday. For Pentecost Sunday. I want to leave you with these words again from Scripture, these words of peace. Cast all your anxiety on God because God cares for you. 
And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To God be the power forever and ever. Amen. On this seventh Sunday of Easter, we gather in our homes, and yet we are together as one, praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. I'll end each of these petitions with the words, God of unity, hear us. Please respond out loud with the words, your mercy is great. There'll also be various pauses in here, Time for you to pray in your hearts or aloud or to name people or things that you wish to lift up to God. We pray. In this time of troubling separation, we pray to you, triune God, for the unity of your churches. Bind us together in the truth of your gospel. Make us witnesses of your mysterious might. As you blessed the early disciples for their unfolding ministry, bless those who lead and serve our local churches and our community. God of unity, hear us. Your mercy is great. Nurture the life of your creation. Support those who explore the mysteries of this world and your universe. Help all online teachers who instruct our children. God of unity, hear us. Your mercy is great. As we prepare for Memorial Day, we pray for peace around the world. Protect all soldiers and assure them of your never-failing strength. Shield the vulnerable who, lives in path, who live in paths of violence. We pray especially for the people of Afghanistan and Syria and other parts of the world in conflict that we now name aloud or lift up in the silence of our hearts. God of unity, hear us. Your mercy is great. Come to the aid of all who suffer. We pray for those who are laden with grief, overwhelmed by anxiety, or struggling without medical care. Uphold all healthcare workers who attend to coronavirus patients. Comfort all families and friends who cannot embrace their loved ones at the time of death. We give into your care all the sick, especially those we name here before you now aloud or held in the silence of our hearts. I lift up my sister Cindy for her amazing and miraculous and continued recovery. Thank you, Lord, for her health and healing. I lift up my brother-in-law, Tyler, who has other health issues going on too, Lord, protect him and keep him safe. And I lift up the rest of their family and friends and everybody who might have come in touch and contact with them. We pray for those in our community, in St. Paul and the surrounding area and in Grand Island and the surrounding area who are sick. We 
we thank you too, dear Lord, for our members and their families who have recently undergone incredible surgery and have had amazing results. Grant them continued recovery and peace. God of unity, hear us. Your mercy is great. Again, we pray, hopefully and expectantly, dear Lord, give this world a vaccine for coronavirus. God of unity, hear us. Your mercy is great. O Lord, grant your oneness to humankind so marked by isolation and division. Bring harmony to families, gangs, distraught citizens, racial groupings, our legislators and lawmakers. Give to each individual a wholeness that is birthed in you. Make us one as you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one. God of unity, hear us. Your mercy is great. Make us steadfast in the faith, dear Lord, and graciously receive our personal petitions that we now name aloud or hold in the silence of our hearts or type into our keyboards. God of unity, hear us. Your mercy is great. Lord, to know you is to have eternal life. We praise you for the lives of all who have died in the faith and who now live in you. At the end, bring us with all your saints into your presence. God of unity, hear us. Your mercy is great. With bold confidence in your love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God of our past, our present, and our future, we place all for whom we pray into your circle of love now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. Take a moment. Share that peace with those you are with now. And now I invite you to take a moment and share that peace with those who now worship together, even though we're separated by time and by distance. I was speaking with my counselor, my own therapist, because mental health is good. And I said, how can we do this? How are you helping your other clients to feel connected? And one of the things she said was, you know what, as tacky and corny as it may sound, air hugs. She said, one of the things that we do, that I have them do is when they're on Zoom with one another, they give each other an air hug. Or maybe they put their arms out like this as they greet each other to help them feel connected. She's like, she said, it's in your imagination, but it's in your heart too. I say, peace be with you. Thank you for offering me and one another your peace. Thank you for offering your neighbors in this community the sacrifice of your service, of your time, of your talents, of your voice, of your compassion, of your hearts, of your material and your elastic. If you want to get involved in the mask making or in other things, please just give me a call or send me a text message or send me an email or hit me up on Twitter or a Facebook message. I'm not on Instagram, but I think I might still have a, uh, a MySpace account. Get in touch with me. I'd love to get you included in either the mask making or in any of the other number of ministries that we have going on right now. We love this community. We love St. Paul and we wanna do everything we can. If you know of needs in the community that are not being met, also please reach out to me and let me know.
I'd love to get in touch and touch base. The ministry of the church continues. Though the doors are closed, we are the church and we are open for mission and ministry. And that requires financial assistance too. So please continue to give your tithes and your offerings either through check or through dropping them off here at the church, um, through the mail or through Tithely, a completely secure um, and online uh, way to give through e-check or through debit or credit card. The information can be found at the bottom of the comments and description, not comments, the bottom of the video description. You just click a link, put in your information. It's just like you're buying something off of Amazon. Um, but the church relies on your tithes and offerings right now, as we always do, um, particularly right now. Please uh, consider giving. Thank you. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, regardless of where or when we are, we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, may the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, Turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. A brief word of announcements. First of all, thank you for bearing with me and for bearing with us and continuing to worship with us online as we remain closed. We have some movement towards that. Our uh, coronavirus task force here, uh, made up of, uh, of some council members and some other folks, have been thinking about ways that we can start to transition towards opening. Um, I don't have anything to share yet. But please know that when we do make that change, um, things will look a little bit different, a lot different um, than the way that they have. Um, but, but, but we do have a target in mind. Um, of course, things are always changing. Uh, we want to open up soon, but not too soon. Please know that we are thinking about this in every way uh, with the utmost concern for your safety and to make it um, a safe and smooth transition whenever we do uh, gather back together. Um, I had other... Oh, yes. Uh, um, next Sunday is Pentecost. Looking forward to that. That'll be a fun, that'll be a fun service. The week after that, the first week in June, I am going to be gone. Um, I'm not going anywhere, but I won't be here. I am taking, uh, taking a week off. Um, uh, for the first time in forever. Okay, so that was fun. Um, so, uh, but, but I already have a service for that. Uh, there's gonna be an online service that day, that, that, that first Sunday in June. Uh, it's gonna be awesome. Um, it, I am a part of that, uh, but it includes a lot of ELCA pastors all the way from Aurora to Ord to here to Grand Island. Um, it's a recorded Zoom worship. It's, gonna, it, 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 it's a blast. Um, it, it'll be a lot of fun, so make sure to uh, tune in that Sunday morning as you would on any other, um, on any other uh, day or Sunday. So, so thank you. I had other announcements. I can't remember them right now. I mean, I'm not going to go back and re-edit them in here. So um, they might be in an email. They might be in the comments or the uh, description of this video. So please uh, be sure to check it out. Um, that's that. Hey, I love each and every one of you. And I miss each and every one of you. And I pray 
for each and every one of you. Um, I've been fond of saying peace, love, and blessings to y'all lately, and I mean that. I pray that you are finding hope. I pray that you are um, encountering gratitude and God's grace in your lives as we are in this together, and we are also hashtag never alone. Um, I love you. I know that you love one another. Uh, it might be a good idea to pick up the phone and call people and, 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 and tell them that too. Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia.